How you doing, Sean O'Brien? With two of the guys in gear, and uh, I'm at the Big Three East uh, this year, 2017, and I'm with uh, Quentin Carter, That's correct. AKA Q. AKA Q. And uh, I just want to ask you a few questions about the the job you're in now. You work for Infowars. I do. And uh, how'd you get into to doing all that? As, as most of you guys know, I was the director of training here at the Big Three right. for six, six and a half years now. Um, I had a friend contact me right before the Republican National Convention saying like, hey, we're getting ready to go. Um, is it, is there, we're looking for someone to do security. Right. And I was like, all right, you know, well, maybe I can help or whatever. And they're like, do you know who Alex Jones is? And I was like, I don't really know who that is. And like, have you ever heard of Infowars? And I was like, yeah, I've heard of them. And they go, well, basically, Alex Jones is the, the host of the show. And we're going to go to the Republican National Convention, and we'd like to have a security team. But we'd like to have it of people that we know are vetted and trained so that we don't end up in some kind of crappy situation. Right. Uh, so got that phone call, went out there, worked at the Republican National Convention, made national news multiple times and all kinds of crazy pictures. <laughs> Um, and then basically that was it for me. Just took off from there? Yeah, so then I kind of came home and it was like, hey, you know, hey Alex, what do you, uh, what do you do for security about this? And he had an answer. And I was like, what about this? And he had an answer. And none of those answers were good enough for me, you know? So I was like, hey man, uh, we really hit it off. I really like you, you really like me. Why don't you let me come out to, to your house and fix some of these things? I'll write you up a security protocol. I'll give you an idea of what I think you should do or not do. And then you can in place those protocols. And he was like, deal, let's do that. So I flew out to, to Austin, Texas and uh, hung out with him, spent all day with him every day for about a week and just kind of looked at what he does, what he doesn't do. Wrote up some security protocols. Like, hey, if this was me, this is what I would do. And went back home. Was home for a couple weeks and he said, hey, um, I want to give you a job. You ever thought about moving to Texas? Awesome. And I was like, nope. <laughs> Never thought about moving to Texas ever, right? I'm from the beach. I live in Florida. So you're here, for, you're here from Florida originally? I'm from here, yep. Um, but he, he basically did the, the old Scarface, let me give you a deal you can't refuse. Right. He told me, write your, write your own plan. You tell me how much money you want. You tell me what you will and won't do. And we'll see how it goes. So I wrote something out and looked at it for a minute and then added a little bit more to it and sent it in and he said, get to work. Awesome. I've been with him ever since. Well, hey, that's awesome. So how is it uh, uh, working with him behind the scenes? I mean, do you get to see, you see all that crazy shit that goes on that the I, normal public doesn't get to see? I do see <clears throat> his life. I'm with him all the time. Right. Um, I'm generally at his house in the morning before he wakes up. We hit the gym, we have breakfast, we go to work, I'm with him. We spend all day at work, I go home with him after work. Gotcha. You know, so I, I see the, the complete intimate version, the intricacies of his real life. Uh, that being said, the on-air person you see, that's really him. Right. Like that is not my number one question people ask me. It's like, hey, is, is Alex really like that? Is he really crazy? Is he switched on like that all the time? Yes. If it's, if it's about a soda, if it's about a car, if it's about anything, that's real life. Like, yeah. I got you. Do they do all, like when you see all the other people on uh, Infowars doing the interviews yeah. and stuff like that, is that all done at the same facility? Some of it is, some of it isn't. Some of it's done uh, at other locations. Yep. I got you. Is there any, um, any one story or something that piqued your interest to where you got uh, kind of involved in or, or Man, curious about? All of them. To tell really? the truth. So, um, being in the Army, I never got involved in politics. Right. Politics don't matter to me, right? I got an order, I got distance and direction, nothing else matters. So, started getting a little bit into politics. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer Hillary Clinton should go to prison. I hear you, me um, too. That's neither here. We won't even get into that whole one. <laughs> that's a whole so video. We, we started talking about different things, and, and I was like, man, he's kind of crazy. Like, the things you say, that you're kind of crazy. <laughs> and he was like, here's a document. Read this. Watch this video. Do that. And the next thing you know, I'm like, and he's not crazy. This is not a conspiracy theory if there's proof behind it. Right. A theory is me saying, sun's not going to come up tomorrow based on X. Right. No proof. 
But if I hand you a booklet or a document or a movie that has facts in it, it's no longer a theory, right? So when I started reading and learning more about the, the attack of September 11th, mm -hmm. craziness, when I started finding out about uh, vaccines, right? never had any idea about vaccines, they never meant anything to me. I've got more shots in the army than you can ever imagine. I've had an adverse reaction to them. I now have allergies to medicine and food that I never had, right. only after getting these vaccines as an adult. So when they start telling you stuff like a two-day-old baby gets a hepatitis B vaccine shot, it's a sexually transmitted disease or transmitted from intravenous drug use. Why does my two-day-old baby need that? Right. It doesn't. My baby's trying to develop. It's brand new. So I started getting into vaccines and learning about this and finding out about what I feel, it's only my opinion, what right. is important, what isn't important. And not that I don't think you should vaccinate your child. I don't think you should give your child seven shots in a day. You know, I get you. There's no way that that can be good for a baby. Yeah, um, I don't like the vaccines either. Yeah. Some of them. I think there are some that are yeah. important. You know, right. polio has been eradicated. Right. There is no polio vaccine. There is no polio disease left. Right. Why do we continue to vaccinate for it? I always wondered that myself. It's gone, right? Um, one of the big things Alex says a lot is Amish don't have ADHD because they don't get the same vaccines that we do. Autism and ADHD both have a direct link to vaccines. Child cancer is up 10,000%. So are the amount of vaccinations that we give and the rate at which we give them and the combinations that we give them. So gotcha. all these things, that's, now we're talking facts, not right. anything else. And some of, the, some of the stuff I hear, like you said, it's like crazy, but then on the other hand, it makes you wonder. It starts, it starts getting you to think. Um, so what's maybe the craziest thing you heard of while you were there that you found out that had some validity to it? 100% that 9-11 was an inside job. So as a hardcore American, as a patriot, as a disabled combat veteran, you know, fought and killed and had friends die for the flag, mm -hmm. never in my life would I have believed. I probably would have fought you prior to that right. had you told me that the government had anything to do with killing 2,700 Americans. Right. Like if you'd have told me that, I'd have fought you. Um, so I started learning a little bit more and reading more documents and seeing things and I'm like, this is crazy, certain things. And you watch the videos over and over and over and it's like, the plane would not go through the whole building. So how does the one video show the nose of the plane coming out the other side, but the FFA never found that nose? When the plane hit the Pentagon, the FFA says they found no plane parts. That, that was my big, they never showed a video and I worked near the Pentagon. Right. I uh, work in Arlington, and there's a bazillion cameras. Everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere in Arlington and D.C. And there's not on film. one video. Remember they had that one still shot yeah. of like a little tiny Cessna kind of coming in on an angle. Right. But then it's like, okay. So I was like, ah, whatever. It's like, maybe that's not crazy. Well, then you find out there was a huge investigation over billions of dollars being stolen and misplaced by the government that had just been concluded like two days earlier that where all those records were being stored in the room that was hit at the Pentagon. Mm. And you're kind of like, not saying I believe it or don't believe it right. yet, but now I'm like, I need to know more. Tower seven, right? Basic math, let's think about this. Two planes, three buildings. How'd a third building fall? That was one of that much so. Right, so they've been through all these hurricanes and storms and and blizzards and all the bad stuff that happens in New York's weather. Right. Nothing's ever happened in this building. Now, miraculously, this building just falls like a controlled debt, basically implodes and falls straight down. Right. I'm like, I'm like, I need to know a little bit more about this, you know? So, of all of the different crazy things that I've heard and been associated with, being brought into the light and kind of seeing more, 9-11's probably the thing that, that hurts my heart the most as an right. American that I probably think is like the craziest.
Now, have you ever ran across a story that that uh, got put out that was just turned out to be complete BS? Or didn't have enough right. validity to run with it or nothing you know, to back it's, it's it up? It's really hard, and, and that's, that's a great point, man. And there are times that I'm like, I say, like, I got nothing to say. Alex, right. I asked me, the other guys say, like, hey, come on. And I was like, I don't have anything to say. Right. Because I'm the guy that I'm going to wait for a lot of facts before I say something. But in their job, they can't. Right, and I get it. You know, like, this just happened. We have to talk about what just happened right now. Right. And it's human nature to dig into that and see, like, hey, I think this happened or this happened or, you know, there was an attack in the U.K. and da da da, da And instantly, as Americans and everything else, the very first thing we think is, you know, it's terrorism. It's right. terrorism. But I'm the guy that's kind of like, man, I'm going to pump my brakes for a day. I'm going to wait for some stuff to come out before I say something. Um, you and know, it, so yeah, it seems now that, like, the media... It's uh, everything's not terrorism. Right. There's always something they want to push, but terrorism. But is, and, but and is that the agenda? It. I think they're they don't want the word used. Right. You know. Radical jihad or is, whatever other word you want to use. They just they don't want to say it and they don't want to use it. You know, look up the definition of terrorism. R right. That's right? it's in black and white. Yep. These things match certain criteria. That's a that's a dictionary. You can read it. Here's what it says. Yeah. You know, was the shooting in Las Vegas a terroristic act? Yes. Yeah. I'm not saying it was. It was done by Muslims. I'm not saying it was done by anybody else. I'm not saying any of that stuff. I'm saying it was a terroristic attack. If you that, right. If you read the definition, it r right. falls right in there. He preyed on innocent, right, unarmed victims. Correct. So. And I don't know why they don't just call it what it is. But I, I honestly think that that's the left versus the right. Um, that's their agenda. Yeah. You know, like they don't want to say it. You right. Know, Hillary Rent Hillary Clinton instantly tweeted, "Imagine how many people would be dead if we had silencers." Right. Well, one, they're suppressors. They're not silencers. <laughs> Two, no one cares about your opinion. You're worthless. Mm -hmm. So, tweet that. Um, and yep. that was not a quote of her exactly. She said something along those lines. Now yeah, she tried to blame it on the NRA again. Now she tried to blame it on the NRA. Feinstein, within 48 hours, has a banned uh, proposal right. of slide fire stocks. Yeah. So we can't get anything else done in, in years. And now suddenly we're going to push this through in 24 overnight, hours. Overnight yeah. we can pass all these things. Yeah. So it goes back to this whole agenda, you know, and I, I would love to be able to say, like, Nowhere in my mind do I think that this is all part of someone's agenda, but I I don't know. I hear you. It's kind of crazy to me. What are your? Uh, do you kind of know what your plans are for the future with them? Or yeah, my plans are just continue doing what we're doing, man. We're fighting a good Keep fight. Out. We're out doing what we can. We're getting the truth out to people. Uh, we're trying to spread liberty. You know, I'm a hardcore libertarian. Uh, I believe that you have certain rights as an American, the same that I do. Right. I don't care if you're gay and I'm straight, if you're Democrat, Republican. I don't care if, if I have gay friends that want to get married, that want to grow weed and protect it with machine guns. I don't care. Right. Like literally do whatever it is that makes you happy as long as you being happy never infringes on me being happy or safe. Yeah, you couldn't have said it any better. You know? Yeah. Um, I carry a gun. Always. Guaranteed. You'll never, ever, ever find me any place that I don't have a weapon. But what's it matter? You right. Know, like, it shouldn't. Does it hurt your feelings? Not one bit. Right? Does it hurt that lady that sits over in the restaurant that never sees my weapon? Should it offend her or affect her in any way? But it does, shouldn't, apparently. But it does. Yes. But the difference is, I don't go out and complain right. that she drives like an asshole. I don't complain that she texts and drives. I'm situationally aware. I watch her text or play on the phone. I just get away from the situation. Yeah. They are the proverbial squeaky wheel. That's the one that gets grease. Yep. You whine, you complain, you whine, you complain, you get what you want. Whereas me, I get up every day, I go to work, I mind my own business, no, and at the end of the day, I go back home. Yep. All right, well, I appreciate you uh, 
taking a few minutes to sit down with Absolutely. me and talk. Uh, I, I really appreciate, really did appreciate the opportunity. it. No yeah, problem. Yeah, thanks, man. Anytime. And uh, you can check us out at 2AGuysAndGear.com and on Instagram at 2AGuysAndGear. Uh, you want to plug uh, InfoWars? Absolutely, man. InfoWars.com. Check it out. Uh, it's a come get a, a non our version of what we feel is a non biased news source. Cool. All right. Appreciate it, man. See you. <laughs>